Over the past three decades, films have become increasingly reliant on computer-generated imagery. I know, right? The technology has created cinematic spectacles that would have once been unimaginable, but has also resulted in sets which are barely recognizable to the final image. Recently, a new technique called virtual production has allowed filmmakers to see in real time what a shot will look like in its final form. How does this tool work? And what does it mean for filmmakers everywhere? This is What is Virtual Production? Before we begin, subscribe and click the bell for more filmmaking videos. Now, let's look at Cinema's new virtual reality. This is the way. Virtual production is a process where real-world filmmaking and digital effects occur simultaneously. This is in contrast to green screen filmmaking, where the on-set cast and crew had to visualize in their mind's eye what the final shot would look like. Virtual production has its roots in processes like rear projection, which is when an image is projected onto a screen from behind. The process would allow for driving or tracking scenes to be done without complicated work on location. Front projections also could be used. On some of the sets in Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, a background was projected onto a screen from the front, allowing for a sharper and more saturated image than the rear projection alternative. At the same time, a new process called keying started to become the dominant technique for decades. Everything that is, or was, began with a dream. By digitally removing the green or blue screen behind a subject, filmmakers can create more immersive artificial environments. But for productions which lean heavily on green screens, it can be difficult to visualize what the final shot will look like. This can make things like framing and lighting more difficult since directors of photography have to take into account elements that they can't see. DP Greg Fraser notes. If you go into a studio without a set, effectively, you've got a blue screen. As a DP, you have to light it of what you think it should look like. Yeah. You don't have any reference of what the background looks like. You might have some concepts, but effectively you're lighting out what you think it should look like. You're framing it to what you think it should look like. There's nothing real, as you don't have anything to, to cling on to. Virtual production set out to solve this problem. Because Avatar almost entirely relied on digital environments, James Cameron and his teams created the Simulcam, a device which combines live footage with computer graphics in real time. It allowed the cast and crew to better understand what their setting was supposed to look like, and it was one of the first uses of virtual production. Now, most virtual production has evolved into something quite different. Today, the most popular form of virtual production is using a set built out of LED walls. These walls can be programmed to show a photorealistic 3D world, usually created using Unreal Engine, a 3D real-time creation tool which was originally developed for video games. The program utilizes Nanite, an engine that allows for photographic sources to be imported into its 3D environment resulting in near-photorealistic 3D backgrounds that required far less effort to create than ever before. Unreal Engine and softwares like it allow for backgrounds to adjust perspective according to the camera's movement. Before filming, the on-set camera will be synced with the virtual camera within Unreal Engine. The camera's movement is then tracked throughout filming and the background will shift to create parallax, which refers to the perspective of the relationship between objects at different distances in a line of sight. 
When a camera is moved on a real location, the background moves in relation to the foreground. Shit just got real. Creating parallax with the LED screen makes the live action objects and virtual backgrounds appear to be in the same space. This distinguishes virtual production from the rear and front projection methods which couldn't adjust to a camera's movements. Meaning the camera had to be still or the background would look warped. Virtual production LED walls can be massive. On The Mandalorian, one of the first projects to use this type of virtual production, the LED set is referred to as the volume, and is 20 feet tall, 75 feet in diameter, and covers 270 degrees of the set. The actors and practical aspects of the set are placed inside the volume. Cinematographers then can film their subjects however they see fit. Usually, the stage surrounded by the LED can rotate so that any angle can be captured. But LED virtual production is also becoming more accessible to indie filmmakers. Companies such as AR Wall have packages in the sub $10,000 range that include everything needed to turn a small screen or larger studio into a virtual set. But what are the benefits of the LED screen technique? One groundbreaking element of the LED screen is its use as a light source. With a green screen, a cinematographer and a team would need to approximate the light of a location. Is it some secret? No, Tell forget it. I'll talk to you later. Well, whatever. For example, if the green screen will be turned into a sunset in post-production, the lighting on the subject needs to match. But with the LED, the lighting can be far more true to the location since the screen itself emits real light from its virtual location. As Mandalorian production designer Doug Chang explains, We get natural lighting from the screens that actually are reflected on the characters themselves, and that created real reflections in the water. And when you add all that up, I mean, you know, as much as you can get in camera, the reality of it just enhances and makes it more believable. Not having to worry about keying out a green screen also means atmospherics, like rain or smoke, can be done for real in a scene and will interact with the light realistically. Get out of the way! <laughs> but of course, the light from the LED screen isn't a perfect substitute for being in a real environment. Cinematographers need to take into account light falloff, which refers to how light dissipates depending on its distance from a subject. DP Sir Roger Deakins explains. The LED screen is not an infinite distance away, so your light source is actually closer. So the fall off from the LED screen is different than it would be if the sunset were, you know, whatever, how many million miles away the sun is, you know. Additionally, the LED screen has difficulty imitating the look of direct sunlight. The screen excels at diffused soft light. Is this safe? Of course it's safe, I'm your mother. Which is why much of the first two seasons of The Mandalorian took place in overcast environments. It looks like your guild rates have just gone up. As Mandalorian director John Favreau noted, the hard daylight is best done in hard daylight. That's not fine. Why is it like that? But while it may not be a perfect one-for-one -one substitute for the real thing, the LED set allows for cinematographers to have far greater control over light than they would in actual exteriors. <laughs> This is particularly true for sunset or sunrise scenes, which are often difficult to shoot since there is less time to film, meaning a production will usually need to shoot them over a series of days. So scenes like that, that the light is actually critical. We know we've done, we've all done those scenes over three dusks and they've been great, um, but we could do those for 12 hours. Virtual production also represents a huge change in how locations are achieved and represented. You better not drop those prisoners. I'm not going to drop them. I'm going to drop one of them. 
The LED wall allows for a much more efficient production process. As ILM visual effects producer Marissa Gomez explains, You could switch between the Iceland location to the desert location, all within the same day of shooting. And the rotating stage allows for quicker setups. You just want to change the background or you want to get a turn around on an actor, you're not physically moving the cameras, you're actually just moving the background and all the lights change. But there is one particular drawback to keep in mind, limited camera movement. As Sir Roger Deakins has noted, If you're shooting a film totally on stage with sets, you still can't have a guy run 100 yards. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Can't track behind them. There's no way of doing that. So, um, exactly. in a in a way, there's technical. There's a few more technical restrictions. Thus, as with lighting, virtual production is not a perfect substitute for a real location. But it can work wonders for a project with globe-trotting ambitions, and also reorders the workflow for virtual location creation. With a green screen, these 3D renderings of locations would usually be created in post-production. But because the backdrop needs to be ready for production, these virtual effects are done in pre-production rather than in post. DP Matt Workman explains the ramifications of this reordering. We're going to see previs and typically post-production or asset creation. That's all coming up front and it start to, starts to happen really quickly. Uh, in the process, and I think that you know the the spectrum and the flow chart of when do you do what is is very much evolving and changing. If the background isn't fully complete before filming, the LED can still be used by having a green screen on the LED behind the subject. Having the virtual locations visible on set also has big ramifications for actors. Green screen acting can be difficult. Like the rest of the crew, actors have to imagine the space they will be in once the scene is complete. With the LED set, actors are almost completely surrounded by visuals of the location. It's just a perfect environment for the actors to interact with rather than just having to imagine it like we used to do when we were working with a green screen. Virtual production also solves a practical problem, the eyeline. When imagining where objects will be in post, an actor may find themselves looking in the wrong spot, giving away that they're not in the same space as whatever has been added. What are you looking at? The LED set fixes this problem because what an actor is supposed to look at is actually there. You see the scenery, you see the environment. It's not a green screen, it's not a tennis ball. You don't have to work hard to envision it. It's there and you just get to feel it and experience it and enjoy it and then create magic with it. Many performers like to say, acting is reacting. And virtual production makes it easier for actors to be reactive to their environments. <laughs> I got you! <laughs> I got you! Take that, you friggin' psycho! I got you! <laughs> With all of these advantages, it's hardly surprising that virtual production is taking Hollywood by storm. The system allows for quicker setups in a controlled environment, while often looking more realistic than a green screen. Thank you. Like with any new filmmaking technology, virtual production is only as powerful as the filmmakers who wield it. And for a tool that's barely more than a decade old, it's already looking quite powerful. Virtual production requires more pre-production planning than ever. Hone your pre-production process with Studio Binder Shot List and Shooting Schedule software. In the comments, let us know what you think of virtual production. It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Is it the future of filmmaking or Hollywood's newest fad? The future is something to look forward to. Not to fear. Until next time, good luck with your own production, virtual or not. And remember to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date on all things filmmaking.